It is the third, uh, third leading cause of death in the United States, and no one is immune. We're talking about strokes, which can strike no matter how old you are. WDSU medical editor Dr. Corey Abear is on call tonight to set the record straight. So, Denny won. This is no ordinary ballet class. It's being held at West Jefferson Medical Center's Rehab Connection, and all of these people live through some sort of brain injury or stroke, even the instructor. I awaken with a piercing headache directly behind my right eye. It felt like a lightning bolt striking. And by the time I awakened, I already was paralyzed completely on the left side of my body. She had a very large hemorrhage into an important part of her brain. And, uh, geez, I was worried whether she was going to live through it or not. Sarah Abruli was 29 at the time of her stroke. She was a professional ballerina, a vegetarian who weighed 106 pounds and worked out four hours a day. Not exactly what you'd consider a candidate for a stroke. In a rehab facility such as this one, I've met people here that have had strokes from very common causes and very rare causes. But what you need to know is that if you ever have any inkling that something's going wrong with your body, you need to make sure you go see your doctor immediately. It could change your life. Strokes can be caused by a number of medical problems, like tumors, blood abnormalities, and trauma. But there's one thing that probably causes the most confusion when it comes to understanding how they happen and who's at risk. Everyone thinks that strokes can only occur when you have high blood pressure, but we now know that you can have low blood pressure and still have a stroke. Like Sarah, whose recovery up to this point has taken less than three years. Well, she's made amazing progress. I remember, um, I've actually known Sarah for years. We both danced together. And so when I heard that she was in the hospital, I went and visited her when she was first in the ICU. And she really didn't have much mobility at all, wasn't really even able to talk to me. Her recovery has been remarkable. But I think, uh, I know, her recovery is, is because of that inner drive that she has, that she refuses to accept uh, uh, being disabled. Let's try not to lift our arms higher than rib cage level. So we don't Ask Sarah and she'll tell you that stroke recovery is all about attitude and optimism. But that's not all. It's been quite a journey and as I say the love of other people and the support of friends and family are invaluable. You can never put a price on that. Support I think is probably the greatest factor in my recovery. There's just so much love out there. I'm medical editor Dr. Corey Abear on call for WDSU News.